And now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Welcome, everyone. You are now on the Starborn Connection radio show. We're coming to you live and ready. It's nice to have you here on board tonight. And whether you are from the USA, Europe, Asia, the solar system, or across the universe, as the late, great John Lennon would sing, it's good to have you with us. And now remember... You are aboard the Starborn Connection radio show, heard only and exclusively on KGRA Alternative Talk Radio, your connection to the multiverse. Hey, listen, join us in the chat room if you want. Just go to www.kgraradio.com, and you cannot miss the door. Okay. Hello, everyone. Julia, how's everything going with you? Julia, Julia, (laughs) co-host. We have two Julias tonight, so I'm yeah, Julia, uh, co-host. <laughs> I'm doing great. I had a fabulous day talking to my late family all day. Lots, lots of Skype calls. I'm really, I'm really just toked. Really wonderful. Yeah, very good. And of course, our illustrious producer, Bill Skywatcher. How are you, Bill? Good evening to both of you. And I just want to say thank you to both of you for allowing us to stream the show on the YouTube channel, and everybody right. is going to be enjoying it. So. Really look forward to hearing you both and your guest. Oh, you are not kidding. Thank you for uh, all those YouTubers out there that are listening tonight. Um, okay. Now, even if one takes it on faith, the study of life after death, out-of-body experiences, and other human encounters with non-human intelligences is a fascinating and rather intense area of study. Recent surveys done by Free show us that, well, the Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Experiences, I've got to get that in there, uh, shows that our out-of-body experiences were prevalent in over 80% of those with extraterrestrial experiences surveyed in the study. As a matter of fact, out-of-body experiences have been shown to be one of the core experiences of extraterrestrial encounters. If you are an experiencer, then it is likely you can identify with this process of -of out-of-body activity. Now, for me, someone who takes it on faith that we do go on after our time here in this plane of existence and then to begin a new life on the heavenly plane, or for that matter, to begin a new life in a reincarnated body on some other plane, it simply reifies the faith that I have in God to know we can experience excursions to other places near and far or whatever timeline we fall into and get a taste of the other side. Our guest tonight is likely one of those most experienced researcher and OBE traveler, along with her husband, Michael, who travels with her on occasion. She also knows Ilona and Ivana Podraska, my dear friends, and as a matter of fact, she does interpretation for the sisters in order for me and others to study, and in my case, to share their experiences and news with you, our audience, friends, and followers. So... Let me get to our guest. Allow me to introduce to you this week, Julia Sellers, and I'm going to tell you just a little bit about her. Julia was born in Bonovsk. Can you say that for me, Julia? Bravo. Thank you. In Western Slovakia, formerly Czechoslovakia. She experienced her first out-of-body experience in 1995. Since that time, she spends the majority of her time studying the out-of-body experience, and she has interests in quantum physics, free energy, anomalous cognition, OBEs, as well as topics about the merging of science and religion. She holds three college degrees in law, journalism, Russia area studies, management, as well as phytopathology. She is fluent in four languages and has dual American and Slovak citizenship. 
She has held positions in the Slovak government, and she is a foreign correspondent accredited to the U.S. Department of State. She is also a freelance writer and artist. She works closely with the Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Encounters. And in our case, she is a friend of the Podraska sisters and interpreter for them as well. Uh, I, I just want you to know, too, that this is a greatly edited biography. This wonderful lady that we're going to talk to tonight is, is just an amazing, involved, and intense person doing all kinds of good work in the field. So, Julia, welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for having me, and it's a great honor uh, for me to be with you tonight, and uh, thanks for the great introduction, Michael. Oh, no problem at all. I wish I could have read it all. It's just amazing. All <laughs> it's a fabulous stuff. resume. Oh, my Thank God. You. It really is. So it really impressed. is. Wow. So, um, it's... Uh, hmm. I had to get a little sip of water there. Um, so, it's nice to have you here. You have a lot to talk about. Um, maybe you can start, uh, Julia, by telling us a little bit about, you know, how you got to 1995, that experience that you had, and a little bit about what you've been taking up since then. Okay. Well, um, my first out of experience um, happened back in 1995, and it was very interesting because I would uh, wake up uh, from a dream and uh, I would wake up and I would realize that part of myself, okay, you can call it uh, self-consciousness, the self, okay, higher self, etheric, double, whatever, was up on the ceiling watching my body that was on on the bed, right? Um and I was yeah I, I, I was watching myself and it took me a while to realize it was my own body that I was watching right now I, I got scared and I'm like what the hell is happening now what happened was that uh, at that time my roommate okay was fast asleep next door now her TV was on and I could listen to the TV show she was watching at that time. I mean, the TV was on. But wow. another Jeez. thing was that I heard her snoring through the wall, okay? Oh, through the, yeah. Now, and so I was watching myself on the bed, right? Now, I'm hearing all the noise around me. I could hear some people talking out on the street. I could hear what was happening next door. I could, you know, hear what was happening upstairs or downstairs, okay? Now, it took me a while to realize that I am out of my body Wow. And my uh, and, and the thing is that when you get out of body, your senses are still intact. They work, okay, and they are all intensified, which means that you can hear what's happening, okay, next door. You can hear what you can hear people talking on the street. You can now what 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 what's happening with your vision? And this is funny because when you're out of body, you do not use your eyes, okay. Now you see everything. 360 degrees around wow. so you see in you see things in front of yourself behind yourself on the right on the left and you just and there's a whole you know you're just confused about what's happening so that was my first out of body experience now when i was up on the ceiling watching myself i'm thinking to myself okay what now and now what happened was that I wanted to go out of the window and to mm. explore, okay, to explore what was happening outside. Now, with the, just with the speed of my thought, I was taken out of the window really, really quickly. Okay, and I ended up on a tree. Okay, I could mm. see what was happening below the tree, and then from the tree, I would start floating up and up and up, all the way up, 
And wow. I got yeah, and I got scared. I got scared, and then when I returned back to my body, because I didn't know what was happening, and the fear of not being able to come back to my body actually mm. got me back, and it was just wild. I can tell you that. Yeah, I, I've heard about that. Uh, you know, of being afraid and you snap back into your body. One of the things though, I wanted to ask you: some of the things I've read in the past, uh, people have looked backwards and seen themselves attached by uh, an umbilicus, and I'm wondering if you noticed that also. Actually, you know what? Some people would have that. Some people would not. Now, I did not have that. And mm. I know Michael, okay, my husband, he does not have that either. So it looks like uh, some people do have that, some people do not have that. Okay, now, but when you, I, I mean, we have to realize when you talk out of body experiences, you have to realize three things. You cannot get them confused with astral travel, which is happening during uh, your dreams. When you are asleep, you get out of body. Everybody does, but we are not uh, aware of that. Now, out of body experience is something that, number one, you experience in the waking state, okay, under full consciousness. Mm -hmm. Number two, you clearly understand that yourself or self-consciousness as separated from your physical body. You clearly understand that. And number three, okay, you watch your body from a, a, fr from like a, like from the ceiling or from a, you know, like a perspective that you know you're not in your physical body, okay? Mm -hmm. You're above your physical body. And also you see everything like happening in reality it's a real experience versus dreaming okay so I, I i i can you know i can tell you that you probably know the difference between being awake and and and, and sleeping right oh, so of course. when you're out of body you know you are awake okay so out of body experience again you uh, i mean you cannot confuse it either with Autoscopy, he autoscopy, REM intrusion, hypnagogia, hypnopompia, doppelganger effect, or bilocation. These are all abnormal uh, cognition uh, perception, right? Okay, but they right. are not out of body experience, okay? Right. Yeah, so, and not that many people realize that. and. You just have people talking about out of body experiences, right? Some people say, "Oh, I have out of body experience. Uh, I ha I had a dream, you know, uh, and in my right. dream I was I was flying." No, that ain't no out of body experience. Okay, that so out of out of travel, body experience out of body experience is something you induce, you choose to do. Actually, not real, oh, Michael. Out of body experience can happen under different conditions. Okay? Oh, okay. okay. Now, yeah, you. It, it could be induced by will. It could happen spontaneously, naturally. Okay, so you just can't help it. You get out of body, right? It can happen. It can happen under. Uh, different circumstances like if you're meditating okay if you're under you know if you use some drugs medication have a medication uh, auto body experiences are happening to um, pathological uh, to people who you know have either uh, epilepsy or different seizures or right, you know, right. different but yeah but what I'm saying is that out of body experiences that are happening in the healthy population in a waking state uh, in active state like you're talking walking working on the computer and the next thing you know you're taking out of body right these are really these are these are out of body experiences that have not been studied by the science yet mm -hmm. because okay. you don't get you don't get that many people who experience that okay so that's a problem yeah uh, the research must be difficult 
uh, because it's uh, you know it, it's so it's so similar to many of the other phenomena. Um, uh, uh, People might confuse. Now, this, yeah, this is a question. The uh, the out of body experience and the uh, near death experience. Yeah. What what are the similarities and differences? Yeah. Well, uh, the the thing is that uh, OBE and NDE, okay, cannot be confused. Now, NDE uh, when okay, uh, near death experience happens when people are dying you know when people are in, in different life-threatening situations and normally with every nde you would have obe right mm. so a part of nde i mean I, i'm 100 percent sure that every near-death experience has an obe in it okay now you don't have to have nde to experience OBE though, okay? Right, right. So yeah, that's the difference. But as I said, majority of people experience who experience a near death experience also uh, have been taken out of body and that's well documented you know that there's a lot of mm -hmm. research and so that's pretty much the case. That is really amazing. Uh, because there's so many different um, modalities in which we can either uh, leave our body or leave our consciousness. One thing, though, uh, I wanted to also ask you is uh, the uh, there there are many different kinds of abductions by by aliens. There's physical abduction. There's uh, you know consciousness and and stuff like that. Is there is there an out of body uh, modality too, uh, when it comes to uh, abduction, alien abduction. Yes, yes, there is, and it's really, as a matter of fact, and I think you have mentioned it earlier, right? The uh, the free foundation, right? Right, uh, right. That's so. Uh, I love the guys. I mean, you have Rudy Schilt on board. You have oh my God, Mary yeah. Rockwell. You have Ray Hernandez. You have Bob Davis. And um, I love you guys if you're listening to me. So hello <laughs> to all of you. Now, but I, I I think you have mentioned that that around 80%, right, of the, I mean, the research that the free uh, uh, have, uh, have done shows that around 80% percent i think it, it was 80 percent right of That's those what I believe, yeah. uh, of those people who experience nhi encounters okay experience all bes so out of body experience has been identified as one of the core experiences of nhi encounters now so what i'm saying is that you don't have to be abducted you don't have to be taken on board of spacecraft and you still are able to have a nice uh, encounter with NHI, okay? And it's whether it's OBE or it's just, you know, uh, telepathically or, or, or what have you. I mean, you know, uh, Michael, for instance, right? My, my right. husband. Right. I mean, it's, uh, well, uh, he, and this is really, I mean, he, I, I don't want to talk about him a lot because he's not ready to get out of the closet yet. Right. But it's, you know, he is someone who has been having out of body experiences since birth. And I'm wow. Seeing, since birth, Michael, over 40 years now. But listen to this. It's funny because he remembers leaving the body as a toddler. Now listen, oh, he, man. Michael, right, he remembers, okay, the whole prenatal stage. He remembers, okay, being in his mother's uterus. He remembers uh, a lot of uh, things and uh, he just had out-of-body experiences that are spontaneous, they are natural, okay, and he has them in active state which means that he would be walking talking you know uh, working on the computer the next thing you know bump has out of body he cannot control that so he and, and, and I'm not kidding he is he spends more time out of body 
than he spends in his physical body. Wow. Okay? And it's just crazy because, and it's funny because in June, I had a, I attended a conference at the Yale University and I gave a speech on OBEs there. And I said, you know, to the people, you know, hey, uh, you have so many people across America and Europe who would pay huge money to someone who would teach them how to get out of body. Because mm. Michael would pay huge amount of money to someone who would teach him how to get just cannot get grounded okay and it's really funny because you know it's just like you know his out of body 24 7 okay wow. so just, and Jeez. it's crazy yeah so <laughs> that's pretty amazing i mean uh how how what does what does a person how do you observe what does a person look like when they are out of body well it's the physical thought, the physical I mean, part <laughs> tell me about it i mean i i just tell you a couple of things okay now when michael gets into his you know out of body state of consciousness whatever we want to call it okay i can tell because okay number one he will close his eyes immediately okay you do not use physical eyes when you're out of body so he would have them like half closed okay like like half closed now number two okay he would lose his balance okay now when he gets out of body and we are walking okay he gets out of body you could tell because he's kind of like has trying to keep his balance uh -huh. and he kind of like you know, like people, like you, you try to get your balance, and, and and you can just tell. Now, when he is out of body, okay. So again, he does not need eyes because he can see by touch, smell, and taste. Okay. Now wow. listen to this. He can feel the shape of objects at distance. Okay. So basically, if something is round or square, okay. Uh, he feels it uh, at distance and at the same time you can taste whatever you're looking at taste with you, just, oh, wow. you have a taste sweet or sour whatever it is now you okay well basically every object has its own vibration or energetic signature attached to it mm -hmm. in the form of either audible or inaudible sound whatever now so when you're out of body you can get a feeling of how dense the object you're looking at is okay whether it's soft or it's hard now when you're out of body okay observing an object okay you can touch it at distance you can smell it at distance you can hear it at distance and you can feel its shape at distance well basically you're, you're able to hook up on the on a resonance okay which helps you to enter the higher rhythm which gives the bill which gives you the ability to to uncover the world of extrasensory perception for you okay now i'm going to quote okay because i have a some extra i brought some extra uh, excerpts from, from my diary okay okay that i okay. take uh, michael's out of our experiences and i am just going to quote some of the 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 really funny stuff um if i may or you, did you oh no please with your question or i just continue or uh, no that's fine I, that would so, be really interesting I, I, okay so basically uh michael is saying the following okay sometimes i have a hard time coming back to my body Sometimes I can return to my body whenever I want to. Okay. Sometimes it's harder to, to get back as as it, it's being directed automatically. Uh, uh, there appears to be some some kind of self-regulated process in motion. Okay. When I try to return back to my body, uh -huh. when I'm out of body. I function multidimensionally. Okay, I'm not just an onlooker, but rather a participant as well to what I'm observing. Okay, so basically, I'm not only an observer, like if you're watching a movie, I'm part of the movie myself. 
right? Mm, wow. When you, yeah, it's great. When you leave your body, right? You leave the third dimension and you continue existing in a, in a quantum field of energy, okay? Which is not dense, like it, like in the case of physical matter, right? But feels lighter and exists independently to physical matter. This non-physical quantum of energy is able to pass through walls, doors, or dense matter, okay? Now, so it's just some of the stuff that Michael says, but it's it, it's much more that, that there is, but, you know, so feel free to ask questions. Uh, yeah, that, um, there's so much. Um, Julia, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, well, we, we actually have a lot of questions um, oh, beautiful. from the chat. I think, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I think Lorraine yeah. has a question about, do you have a sense of time when you're out of body? Like no, time, I, I imagine. It, it, thank you for the question. And I, I, I wanted to talk about it. Basically, I mean, when you get out of body, time does not exist. Neither does place. Okay. Now, uh, trust me, guys. Sometimes Michael would leave the body at 2 p.m., come back around 11 p.m. Now, he would come back and he would just talk to me and he would just say, Julie, what time is it? And I'm like, 11 p.m. And he goes like, what? It, it, it felt like I was gone for 20 minutes. Wow, jeez. So there are tremendous time distortion, okay? Distortions when you're out of body. And as I said, I mean, time and space does not exist when you're out of body, okay? Neither does present uh, future or uh, the present or future. Now, the past and the future actually influence the present, okay? Past, present, and future are not separate, okay? On a subtle level, at the point where the uh, the the waves travel at the speed of light or higher. They are combined into one and the visible whole. Everything takes place in one moment, and the moment is called now. The past, although it has already occurred, can be altered together with the future under certain circumstances. And when I say alter, okay, altered. The past can be altered on the subtle level. I'm not talking the physical level. I'm talking the subtle level. So when you, okay, make a de certain decision right now at the present, you at the same time, okay, you at the same time uh, have an influence on the past and mm -hmm. your future. But again, guys, I'm talking the subtle level. That's energy level, okay? Right, so right. it's it's just uh, it's just wild. I can tell you that. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's another question. It's pretty okay. cool. Um, it's kind of long, so I'm I'm just gonna. Okay. Um, if we, if we can get out of our body, what stops others from jumping into it? Mm. Um. And he was talking about like if an ET crashes and dies, and it's uh, there's a fetus, would its soul go into the fetus? Um, it's Ufi Aturi says this. So, one more time because I'm not getting that. Yeah, uh, let me just read the whole thing. Uh, uh, okay, because it, it's yeah, not, it's okay. it's um, yeah, that's best. Wrong. Assume non-human craft crashes. Let's say during the 1940s. The Roswell, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and the the beings in the craft dies. Mm -hmm. Does the soul, their consciousness, when it leaves their body, can it enter anything that's near, like um, another human or a fetus? And the other part of the question is, if we can get out of our body, what stops others from jumping into it? So I think it's like the same thing, you know, just uh Okay. Well, basically to my understanding is that yes, 
that the uh, as the uh, you know if the ed dies okay and the soul can enter another people's body but the other thing is that we have to differentiate what kind of et it is because there are some ets that <laughs> do not have what we humans call soul okay okay now right. soul yeah. is attached to feelings it's feeling based soul is feeling based frequency mm. some uh, ETs out there I, I would say majority of them they do not have the feelings or emotions so wow. they, it, it's mm. totally different you have to understand that a human being is human because it has soul which is feeling based and when I say feeling it means feeling because you have to understand that feeling is different from emotion and different from a thought. Now, feeling is of vibrational nature. Emotion is of electromagnetic nature. So is thought. Now, when I said a feeling is of vibrational nature, okay, vibration is as a form of a pulse and it's pulsing it's a compressed mechanical longitudinal wave as opposed to emotion emotion is electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic wave okay is totally different from a vibration electromagnetic wave is an oscillation so it's a thought so you have feeling as a vibration Okay, you have emotion as an oscillation and you have a thought as an oscillation, which are both of electromagnetic nature. Now, ETs do not have what we humans do have, and that's a feeling. And a feeling is a feeling, okay? And please do not mistake it for an emotion or a thought, okay? Mm -hmm. So... That's and it gets interesting there because well if uh, if E T dies on the on the on the Earth right here if it cra if the spacecraft crashes right and E T dies I you know I'm I, I'm just speculating what kind of E T is that okay do they have emotion do they have feelings okay do they have emotions okay and this is you have to really consider all of this to answer. So I'm not going to speculate because I don't know what kind of ED we're talking about or the, the guest is, you know, the, who sent the questions talk, talking about. So oh, I would say that it might, but again, it depends, okay? Because soul is soul, okay? It's feeling based. It has vibrations. It has pulses okay and vibration and pulses are sound based uh whereas electromagnetic wave is a light based and it's two different things which should not be you know which should not be mixed together it's like you you, you try to mix you know apples and mm. apples here, so yeah so yeah so. wow wow that's, <laughs> that's amazing so <laughs> So if you if you let leave your body, um, is it possible that another consciousness can go in it? Yes. It, oh. It, okay. Yes, it it is it is possible. It it is and it, it is possible and you know, not only not only when you leave your body, but I could tell you instances of when you do not have to leave your body but mm. when you under influence of drugs alcohol or oh, wow. what you have you you know you get really open to astro level and right. that's when yeah that's when different entities 
from astral level and you have negative and positive and it is there that's yeah. what they can jump into your let's call it consciousness whatever and occupy your body and the next thing you know you get sober and now in the morning you wake up and suddenly you feel like smoking or drinking or you start doing things that you've never did before and you wonder oh my god what happened but you know this can happen to people who are very sensitive and they would go to a hospital to just visit a relative okay now but if you have people who just died in hospital okay and the soul or the consciousness on the the quantum of energy that leaves the body after uh, after the body is dead this this quantum of energy can just jump into a living being who is sensitive enough because it's open okay it's opened up it, it, it's it, it's like opened up okay mm -hmm. and you can just jump into a person who is visiting a relative in a hospital you come back home and now you have you know you have to I mean let's call it souls of people who just died in a hospital so mm, that wow. happens a, that happens a lot yeah I, I have a follow-up question on that. Uh, when, uh, let me see, how can I put it? Jeez. Um, yeah. Let me see. I, I, I'm trying to think about it. Let me yeah. keep talking for just a second. I have to get it together again. It's, okay. <laughs> it's a pretty wild question. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. oh, 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 wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, when a person let's say a person is in a car accident yeah. and they have a near-death experience yeah. and they come back they're saved they managed to have their life saved and now all of a sudden because of their head injuries they yeah. speak they speak a different language yeah. and like or like different things is that evidence of a soul occupying the body with with the host now, not necessarily uh, what you just described as a case of uh, sanoglossia. It's called sanoglossia. It's a Latin term. Uh, it means that out of the blue, a person starts speaking a foreign language. Okay. Now, I know that have been instances of this happening in the past and I remember a case of a, uh, a patient that was treated for migraines or I, I think a heavy um, it wasn't uh, epilepsy but migraines and maybe uh, just uh, some kind of pathology whatever now this girl out of the blue started to talk in Sanskrit you know and Sanskrit language wow, is, yeah. yeah and she she started to receive messages highly spiritual okay messages and but what what was interesting is that it was a um, a male voice okay she heard a male voice okay coming into her I can't remember what it was right or left ear and she okay just started to talk in sanskrit and uh, a certain you know sanskrit specialists they studied it and they confirmed that indeed that was a sanskrit language but it you know it's not necessarily she has never been to a car accident she has never encountered a near uh, uh, nde but suddenly she started to talk to a foreign language that she has never learned before mm -hmm. okay so no you don't have to necessarily be uh, a part of uh, nde okay or car accident or what have you in order to receive uh different messages from uh higher levels so to mm -hmm. speak so that's pretty interesting yeah how, how about um can one uh, travel 
in a temporal way when they're in an out-of-body experience? In other words, can they go to the uh, past or the present or yeah. uh, the future? You can, I mean, see, it's, it's really, well, you can travel both directions, okay? You get out of body and now it's really, it's, um, well, let's, okay, you can be taken into the past but you can be taken into the future as well. So you have precognition and retrocognition. Now, uh, it happens, you know, I just give you, I just give you an example, like okay. I and Michael, okay, back in 2005, whatever, we were walking up the stairs in one uh, building and, um, a certain unnamed town and it was in Europe right now right. we're walking up the stairs okay now Michael uh, started to okay the way he was walking up the stairs was like there were some people uh, walking down the stairs right in front of him and he tried to make a way for them but no one was there. And I asked, okay, Michael, what are you doing? Why do you act like you have some people in front of you and you try to make some space for them so they can mm. walk down? And, you know, he told me, you know, Julie, I just saw a bunch of Nazi officers, okay, oh, wow. from for the second, walking down the stairs. So what happened that? Michael was automatically taken back into the World War the Second, okay? And he saw some Nazi officers walking down the stairs while wow. we were walking up. up but but listen, listen, Michael. And I, I was curious and I acquired about the building. And guess what? During World War the Second, the building was full of Nazi officers because they lived there. Okay, they lived there. It was their 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 they, they, they live in the house. Okay, in the building. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay. So what I'm saying is that, you know, I'm, another example. Okay, I'll tell you this. Uh, I have Michael. Okay, uh, sometimes he would just. Write me an email and saying, Julie, okay, what year are we at? Is it 2017 or is it 2025? Okay, so what I'll tell you why. Okay, what's happening that Michael will naturally, spon spontaneously get out of body and he would be taken into the future, right? Now, so uh, sometimes he does not distinguish what the reality is okay uh -huh. if he spends half of a day in 2025 and he will get back into 2017 he's getting confused you know he yeah. does not know what the reality is i mean is the reality 2025 or 2017 guess what for him it feels the same okay when he's out of body he really feels like he is living the reality, okay? Mm, it's mm -hmm. all real to him. And so this kind of, uh, it, I mean, he can be taken back hundreds years back, but he, I mean, he would know he's in the past because he would tell the difference, you know, people wearing different clothes and he can tell, oh, it's a past. Now he can tell the future, by let, let's say he would see me in the future mm -hmm. and he sees me much older you know my my hair is all gray and he knows it's the future but if he's in 2020 it's like three years from now yeah i don't look that different from what i look now then when he is getting confused because he cannot tell the reality from you know from the future right and it's really confusing <laughs> it sounds yeah. like it. it can look at the newspaper <laughs> oh. if, if they still have newspapers in 225 <laughs> they probably won't yeah. have newspapers yeah. anymore <laughs> <laughs> so 
So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those uh, those screens will be so cheap now that you can just pick up a an LCD screen and put it in your pocket, roll it up, and there's the news. Yeah. <laughs> so has has uh, has anyone, meaning either you or or Michael or anyone that you know, ha- has anyone brought back any uh, like events or, I guess, prophecies or anything about what's going to happen in the future? Yeah, I mean, I have many of uh, entries in my diary, which I started to take back in 1998, and it's just, let me just go through it. Oh, please, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, I can, uh, I see one on the... On Earth, on uh, Stargates, on the Moon. Okay, let's 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 look at this one on Earth. Okay, and I'm quoting Michael. Okay, this is okay. an entry. Uh, this is an entry made in 1998 and, uh, in my diary, and it says that um, I saw the Earth blow up in the future. Wow! In, uh, in the past, a long time ago, the Earth blew up too. It Hmm. happens in a cycle. The Earth is born and dies. All planets come from inside of the sun, okay? Uh, A disk spins rapidly, creates uh, mega explosions, massive explosions. The Earth was a ball of fire, okay? There was no moon yet. It was created much later. All planets came from the sun. The Earth came from the Sun, Mars came from the Sun. The Sun spit balls of fire, Mm. which, when cooled down, became the planets, okay? Or I have some uh, on Stargates, maybe? Can I read the one on Stargates? Oh, absolutely, sure. All right, okay. There are many interdimensional gates and portals located in different locations on Earth. Imagine that you're sailing on a boat. Suddenly, you come across such a gate, which is hidden in the ocean. You might be sucked in by it, okay? Travel through time and get into other dimensions. Mm. Sometimes such gates are created by the sun. Its specific energy creates certain paths through which different entities can move. If you happen to be near such a gate, it automatically pulls your body inside. To get out, however, you must use a different gate than the one you entered through. The entrance and the exit can never be the same. Wow. People, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Some people in certain emotional states of high joy or love emit waves of specific frequencies. These frequencies and the form of light or electromagnetic radiation can open a stargate. Such people are actually used for opening gates all the time, whether in the past or present or in the future. The opening of a gate is heavily affected by the overall temperature of the atmosphere as well as the environment in Mm. which it is located. Also, the type of electromagnetic radiation used for opening uh, gravity and the time cycle the planet currently finds itself in, okay? All of this affects not only opening, but also the closing of the gates. Mm. Sometimes the gates remain in their original location and just open and close. Other times, however, they do not stay in the same place. They mm. move. Right. Okay, so that was an entry from a diary. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah. Well, okay. How about the moon? <clears throat> oh, yeah, the moon. All right, let's Yeah, see. the moon, right. Oh, okay, all right, the moon. Okay, so. 
the U.S. government has buildings on the moon. Uh, this is something that Michael has told me on a number of occasions earlier. Now, the U.S. government has a special technology, okay? It's a gadget that can completely erase your memory. As to the moon, it will be heavily inhabited in the future. Well, it is now, but it will be heavily inhabited in the future. As for the moon, it will be okay. But whatever there are, how there are, however, already secret government buildings uh, on the moon right now. This information is hidden from the public. It's interesting to know that in the future, many pharmaceutical plants, okay, pharmaceutical plants, will be built on the moon for the processing and manufacture of medicinal products, okay? Mm, mm -hmm. Which is really interesting, okay? On the moon, people must wear oxygen masks because of the atmosphere, which is different from the atmosphere on Earth. It's not easy to adjust to, okay, the atmosphere. But uh, on Mars, it's a different story because on Mars you can walk without the uh, oxygen uh, oxygen mark, okay, M mask. Inside the buildings on the moon, uh, people can move freely without the mask. So basically, when you're on the moon, okay, you have to wear oxygen mask unless you are in a building. That's what I'm getting uh, from from uh, the description. So it's funny you will have pharmaceutical plants built on the moon wow that's it, pretty amazing it, yeah. it's it, it is yeah but you know you think if you think about it um you know uh, creating or manufacturing medicine in, in zero g or in very light galaxy uh, or very light uh, gravity might have its advantages when you're putting when you're uh, developing medicine or yeah. manufacturing it Anyway, I, before we go to break, it's 1053 guys out there in the multiverse here on Earth, and I'm wondering if you could tell me one thing, uh, maybe two things. It, can you see yourself? Can you look down and see yourself, or are you just energy? And can you see other people that are uh, traveling on a, uh, an out-of-body experience? Hello? Yes, hi. Yeah, okay, I, I lost you for one minute. Oh, um, okay, let me ask it again. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you see other people that are on a, uh, uh, that are involved in an out-of-body experience when, when you, let's yeah. say, go to a certain place, time, or uh, plane? Can other people yeah. see you and can you see others? Yeah, Michael, uh, definitely. I mean, I will just tell you a really short story. That uh, Michael told me uh, two months ago, he told me that he got uh, out of body and he checked the moon, okay? Now listen to that. There was like eight people on the moon, okay? All Americans, okay? Uh, from American government. And uh, one lady... Okay, from those people on the moon. Okay, they're based there right now. Okay, now one lady has the same ability to just leave the body like Michael has, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when Michael appeared there out of body, the lady would see him and she would warn him to get out of there and she mm. would tell him, Don't you ever come back. Right, oh, wow. and of course, Michael, being stubborn as he is, he says, <laughs> "Oh, you, you know, go to." I, I mean, he he used some curse, oh, cursing words, which I'm not going to repeat here on the show. But <laughs> he sent her somewhere, okay, and he came back to Earth. Now, the next thing, uh, the, the 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 next thing he knew, the lady came to Earth out of body, and she was chasing him. And she, again, issued a warning to him. And she said, don't you ever come back to the moon, okay? This area is restricted and we don't want you there, okay? Oh so, yeah, I mean, people out of body can see each other. And, I mean, moreover, okay, 
Michael told me that there's a lot of people on the earth, okay, who are able to get out of body. And they have the so-called out-of-body meetings, okay? Mm, they would, yeah, wow. they would, yeah, they would meet <laughs> out of body and discuss certain things uh, concerning or pertaining to future development of the earth. These are all people with specific certain missions on earth, okay? They all can, you know, they have all the ability to live the body and what you have. And yes, they would have out-of-body meetings. So it's pretty interesting. You're darn right it is. It's, uh, it's amazing. I, you know, I, I mean, I've read about after death experience or near death experiences and out of body experiences, but you know, to talk to someone who has experience firsthand and who is married to a guy who has lots of experiences all the time, I think it's really pretty awesome. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay. it's, it's hard to add so hard to live with a oh, person I, like that um, definitely, yeah but i can it's imagine it's not the topic of the discussion but it is hard i mean yeah <laughs> i bet you it is honey it's yeah. time for dinner honey it's time for dinner i'm uh, i'm on <laughs> mars now just give me a minute you know <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, we're going to go to a break. Um, everybody needs to take a breather for a few moments. So you are listening to the Starborn Connection radio show live right here on KGRA Alternative Talk Radio, your connection to the multiverse, and we will see you on the other side. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Are there mysteries about our past that are truly lost to time? What are the great mysteries of the ancient world that we can still learn about today? This September 17th through 24th, 2017, set sail into the heart of mystery with the Ancient Mysteries Cruise. Depart from New York aboard the Norwegian Breakaway and spend a week at sea, along with several days exploring the island of Bermuda with private lectures featuring leading experts in the field, like author Eric Von Daniken, star of history's Ancient Aliens, as well as writers and researchers Nick Redfern and Micah Hanks. Make your reservations before time runs out by visiting HolidayMakerTravel.com or reserve by phone at 877-6. 642-4308. That number again is 877-642-4308. The mysteries of the past await you. Visit ancientaliencruise.com. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car. Which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com Hey, welcome back from the break, guys. We are here with Julia Sellers, uh, the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the expert on out-of-body experiences. We are really learning a lot tonight. Uh, and uh, don't forget, now we're coming to you live on KGRA Alternative Talk Radio. Uh, frankly, the only place I would ever do a radio show. This is a, this is a great place to do a show. Anyway, um, Let's get back to our conversation with Julia Sellers. And um, let's see, uh, before I get into anything, uh, Julia, co-host, is there any questions in the chat room you need to bring forward? I'm looking, I'm looking. I think um, there was a question. Uh, Lorraine, uh, I think this is the last question. Um, Do you find that OBEs are viewed um, heavily. Okay, I'm trying to. I'm not sure this. Isn't it hard to put these stuff together? It's hard to put it into words. Does she find the way OBEs are viewed are heavily influenced by the current culture of the time? So I guess, how is OBEs viewed by other people? Like, Like, I guess, what's the attitude? about OBs now, as opposed to maybe 30 years ago? Well, um, as far as I understood the question, who have OBs happening as far back as Bible times? I mean, I can tell you when I read Bible, I definitely see some prophets experience all BEs. Mm. Now you have all BEs. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been around uh, all the time. It's just that people would call it different. And as I say, I mean, what I found interesting, and I'm talking about Europe right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's very hot in uh, certain countries of Europe, like the Czech Republic, uh, Russia, uh, Slovakia, Poland, Hungary. You would have courses taken that would teach you how to get out of body. Wow. But what I'm, but what I'm, my, Michael, what I'm saying is the following: Why do you want to get out of body unnaturally, unless it's spontaneous and natural? You know what I mean? I mean, if it happens to you, that far. That, that's fine. It right, started to right. happen to me back in 1995. I mean, you got Michael who started to fly out of body ever since he was born. So what I'm saying is that why do you want to rape the nature? Why do you want to be in and have out of body experiences? Stop going against the nature. Either have them spontaneously, naturally naturally or do not have them at all if you are not ready for out of body experiences do not have them i mean i can tell you to i mean as far as i know you would only have a couple of people okay that would experience the out of body experiences naturally you would have Let's look back. You would have Ingo Swan, and Ingo Swan would be one that would be involved in the Stargate program back in the 60s, right? You would have Alex Tannis. Alex Tannis was a gifted psychic who uh-huh. would experience out of body, okay, states. Whenever, I I mean, he was four or five when he has his first spontaneous out of body. Then you would have Bob Monroe, but, but. 
Bob Monroe would have out of body experience induced by the audio technology. Like you would have the binaural uh, audio technology, like you would have one frequency coming into right, your right. right ear, you would have another frequency coming into your left ear, okay? And that that's all fine. That's, uh, you can induce out of body, but my question is why? Either mm. you have it naturally, and if you do, okay, there is a reason why, but please do not try to be hard, be in, and do not try to uh, try to have out of body artificially induced. Why? You, you see my point? You know? I yeah, mean, it, why? it's, it's like know? the same thing that happens when an abductee looks for the first time into the face of a gray. It's very shocking. I guess, you know, it, it's something completely different that we don't know anything about. So it would it would kind of be a shocking experience and not something, uh, you know, that yeah. we would enjoy at the time, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it happens continuously, I mean, hey, you know, take it embrace it work with it but why do you want to buy some audio technology that would force you out of body why it's against nature you know what i mean I yeah mean, right yeah. exactly yeah when i what i want to move to now for a, a few minutes i just want to talk a little bit about my dear dear friends in the czech republic uh ilona and ivana podraska who have uh have had have maintained contact with the alien oli uh over the course of time here and, and she's been sending me some uh fascinating stuff that i have been uh talking uh to about with our audience here um what are your impressions and you know how do you how do you think uh, these ladies are, are are doing all this work well i mean ivana and ilana i mean i just love them they mm. are two precious sweethearts they are wonderful yeah yeah i mean ivana is the medium she uh, was gifted i mean she's the one transmitting uh, the messages from Oli, who okay. it's my understanding is the extraterrestrial biological entity, right? Right, right. To my understanding, it's short grade, right? Now, what, I mean, you said short grade, right? Is it, what is it? Some people say it's, you know, Zeta Dracos, it's rem it resembles to Zeta Rays or uh, their hybrids, whatever, whatever, but, but, what I'm saying is that I I love the girls, okay? And um, every day I talk to them. And Ivana, okay, tries her best, okay? Ilana is the one who is putting it down in the right. writing. But Ivana is the one who is uh, taking the messages. And as a matter of fact, I talked to the girls um, uh, yesterday, right? And they say hello, and uh, they they just you know they say you know uh, they just say you know Julie tell tell the following story on the air if you have a chance. So I'm going to say that. Yes, please. Okay. Now um, back in 1990, I, I forgot the year. Oh, whatever, I think 1993. But, yeah, but yeah. but but get get this. Ivana and Ilana, uh, they went to a hospital to see a friend of theirs, okay? Uh, the, the friend was just lying in a hospital, so they wanted to be nice and, you know, to visit them, to, right, to visit the right. friend. Now, get this. So, as Ivana and Ilana was walking the hallway in the, in the hospital, okay? Now, they got stopped by a uh, receptionist, uh, mm -hmm. a later receptionist, right, at the hospital, and one, um, one um, uh, nurse, okay? She was a nurse. 
And the, so uh, they will get stop and the receptionist says, hey, ladies, you cannot bring the child in. OK, you oh, can wow. go visit your friend, but without the child. Now, Ilana goes like, oh, my God. What what child? We don't oh, have God. no child with uh, 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 Michael. I know you know, but but let me finish the story. So yeah. Ivana goes like Ilana. Well, there's no child. So guess what? They continue walking the hall. Okay. Now the the receptionist uh, yelled at them, lady. I have told you, you are not allowed to 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 bring the child in a hospital. Okay, oh, man. and and Ilana and Ivana, they go like, I, I'm sorry, there is no child. Okay, now guess that get 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 this. Um, after the visit, okay, Ilana and Ivana talk to the receptionist and the nurse, and guess what? The receptionist and the nurse both, okay, claimed they saw a child around one. 120 centimeters tall wow. the child has no had no hair and had big eyes well guess what okay <laughs> you know who they seen right absolutely and, and 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 michael it was funny because the the receptionist and the nurse they were looking okay at ivana and ilana walking down the hallway through the glass okay so they have seen only through the glass and that's funny like he was i mean they were able to see him through the glass although ivana and ilana were not aware of only joining them at the time wow. so i i really I, I found this fascinating you know so you have two people and i don't see why they would make it up you know you have the receptionist you have the nurse they both claim yes there was a child 120 cent of 120 centimeters tall no hair funny looking and big eyes okay so so I I really found it interesting, you know, and it's 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 great. Yeah, that so. kind of uh, you know that kind of supports um, the uh, you know the fact that this stuff is going on, especially when someone or two people who are completely and totally unrelated to what's going yeah. on, yeah, you know, yeah. recognizes yeah. Uh, you know Oli following them. Um, now she says she contacts only through uh, a spiritism. It, it, is that kind of like, um, uh, I guess you would call it channeling? Um, yeah. Now, see, here's here's the thing. Um, you get the uh, okay. You get a contact uh, through either channeling or the so-called direct vibrational cognition. Now, hmm. what's the difference? What's the difference here? Right. Channeling is electromagnetic base. OK, so you channel through electromagnetic radiation. It's the light. OK, now when you channel or when you get information through direct vibrational cognition, there is no electromagnetic channeling involved. Mm. There is a there's a direct. It's called data streaming. You stream the data not from outside, okay, but through your inner self, mm. inner yeah. being, and that's what the difference is. If you get information through direct vibrational cognition that's information that is vibration vibration base and vibrations are pulses now if you get information via channeling that's electromagnetic 
uh, that electromagnetic uh, information, that information that you get from the light, from electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation, and that's oscillation, okay? Mm. So that's from outside source, while the vibrational, it's called direct vibrational streaming, you get it from within yourself. It's your deep inner being that you are able to pull the information uh, up. It dang. seems to me that Ivana and Ilana are getting the information via electromagnetic channeling. So yeah, that would be an outside source and it would be done via electromagnetic radiation, okay? And that's fine because you have to be pretty sensitive in order to get the to you get the channel. Yeah. So and Ivana is very sensitive. I mean, oh, I can, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now why why uh, now my audience knows all about the the uh, car situation where yeah. uh, it caught fire. <laughs> what? Uh, what is so important they the uh, information that they know or you know knowing Ali being able to talk with him why would someone want to erase them <laughs> you know I mean it's a pretty wild guess I mean we we do not know that what we know is that when we approached Ollie about the car and uh, who is behind the attack on the car, you know, Ollie said, and that's funny because he said it's someone, he says, you know, Ivana, Ilana, it is someone that you know. That's and scary. It is, and at the same time, it is someone who was government trained, okay? It's a tall guy who knows what he was, he knew what he was doing. He was government trained. He, but, but the reasons why it's, it's hard to guess because, you know, I mean, you, it, I'm, I'm taking a real wild guess. I mean, I, you know, you, okay. Now, if you, you know, there are different theories out there, you know, there's a theory right. that would, you know, that tell you that, hey guys, the, the EB, the extraterrestrial bio, uh, biological entity that all it is, okay? They are hybrids that are, you know, short grays, but some people would say that those entities have certain secret dealings with American government and they are here for a certain reason and the American government knows about them and in exchange for different different technology the American government would let the EBs to abduct people and to you know, do certain uh, research on the people and, you know, so it's a wild guess to me. I do not know why Oli and, and his uh, spacecraft are around uh, what, what their mission here is, okay? And I don't think anyone knows, but... I mean, I would say that they are benevolent and they would, their mission is to help people, okay, or develop or involve involvement of Earth, uh, let's say, in a positive direction versus negative. And you have wild theories out there. We do not know. What we know is that, yes, Ivana and Ilana were chosen for the contact. The contact is there. It's much alive. And it's going on for a number of years. And, but, you know, if you, I, 
I can't say more than what I just said because uh -huh. it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I would not, I don't want to guess. I mean, it's, you yeah. know, you have, you, you know, you have different theories out there and you want to make a wild guess. I, I don't know, but what I'm saying is that, I mean, so far, I, I, I found Oli to be very, very uh, uh, benevolent creature. Yeah. And, yeah, he seems that way to me and, too. And 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 Michael, I mean, he number of times his transmissions. Okay, when I compare them to what I know from before from Michael, okay, and when right. I compare my entries and and my diary from what I I know from Michael and what Oli said, it's completely the same. So I do not have the reason mm. not to believe, okay, because I see the parallel there, and it is there. It's clearly there. So, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Well, I want to take a few seconds to give a shout out to Ilona and Ivana who are listening tonight and also to Oli. Hello, guys. It's Hello. Uh, good to have you uh, in the audience. Uh, just just incredible stuff. Now, one more thing uh, before I turn it over to Julia. I, I want to ask you in your book, in one of your chapters, and I'm ruffling through it now. I can't seem to find it. Uh, you talk about uh, someone actually being in the hall where the Akashic records are kept. Do you recall uh, that part in there? I'm trying to find it too. <laughs> it, it It's interesting because you hear so much about it and, you know, if someone was there physically... That kind of, well, not physically, but, you know, out of body, then it kind of proves its existence in a way. Uh, where are we with that? Anyway, uh, uh, anyway, it, they've always had a question about the existence of the Akashic records. They do exist. Yeah, and, and this kind of says that they do exist and that they are in a place, and the only way you can really get to them is via out-of-body experience. Well, Michael, I mean, let me tell you this. I mean, anyone, you know, you, okay, you say, okay, you can you can reach the uh, 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 cash records uh, via out-of-body experience, but let me tell you this. If you run certain frequency, if you are able to get on certain vibrations, certain frequency, certain amplitude, certain mm -hmm. length weight, just let's call it certain frequency, you automatically get access to a cash record. Wow. Trust wow. me. It's and I mean, yeah, it happens a lot when you're out of body, but you do not have to be out of body to attain certain frequency, okay? I see and it. once you hit certain frequency, boom, you there automatically and you just downstream, you just stream the information from from the Akashic. Uh, wow, jeez. Right? Yeah, it's, this is how it works. And it, it does happen, trust me, trust me. I wonder. I wonder if those little flashes of insight. Did you ever have that where, where all of a sudden you feel like, hey, I've got the answer to everything in existence, but then yeah. it goes away real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that's kind of hitting the vibration, I guess. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> it's pretty and cool. And you better, you better when you hit the vibrations and you get the feeling and you ask the questions, you have the answer. You better put it down, or you lose it. Yes. It happens to me yeah. all the time. All, all yes. the yeah, yeah, that that's it, yeah. Wow, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to uh, turn it over now to my esteemed colleague, <laughs> uh, Julia Weiss, because she's got a lot to talk about. It's been a couple of uh, weeks since she's had a chance. So, uh, Julia and Julia, please yeah. uh, have fun, have fun. This is oh. good stuff. Good well, stuff. I wanted to continue the, the conversation with, with Julia because um, I had a few out-of-body uh, quite a few experience out of body um, 
And every time I come back, it hurts. Um, my head, huh. when I get to the reality that I'm back in my body, my head really hurts. And it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. And there were there was a couple times when I was meditating. And one time, a couple times it happens when I'm not meditating. I yeah. don't actually leave my body. What I feel is I feel like I'm getting ready to. Yeah. And it's very, very uncomfortable and I stop it. So do you find um, with a lot of people that it's painful when they return um, yeah, and again, Julia, uh, good question. Uh, it, it's a really good question. It depends on what uh, kind of, uh, it depends on, you know, you have people who would leave the body spontaneously out of the blue unexpectedly like Michael does, okay? Now, you have people who would have to get ready for it. They would have to meditate. They would have to do the little relaxing, relaxation, and they would get out of body. But yes, there are people who would find it painful not only getting back to the body but also leaving the body you would have people because i consult with my uh my clients back in slovakia and the czech republic i mean i would get tons of mails and phone calls every day about people who are getting out of body and it is a painful experience for them there are people who would but upon returning to their body they would have migraines they would have back pains they would have specific pain in the coccyx area okay where your kidneys is and where the tailbone is okay so that is happening but again you would have people that would just leave the body spontaneously naturally and then ha th there's no pain involved but then you would have people who would contemplate who would meditate in order to get out of body and yes that would be painful for them um, it, either leaving the body or coming back to their body yes yeah, so you have it depends on the right. uh, of, of, um, people right um yeah whether well, you the, do that or not well the painful part for me i leave my body a lot when i'm in dream state and that's when it's really really painful to return because what happens is uh when i finally get back into my body I'm absolutely paralyzed, um, and I, it takes me a while to acclimate, okay. um, and then uh, I don't actually meditate at okay. all to mm -hmm. go out of body. Okay. I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm going within to get, you know, my guides to speak to me, knowledge, yeah. but I don't actually meditate in order to do an out of body. Okay. But now, but Julia, when you get out of body, how do you know that you're actually out of body <laughs> versus, versus being a, a, a dreaming? You know, it could be right, dreaming right. After well, they call death. it, I guess the best thing is, um, I don't know if it's the same, uh, they call it going into the astro plane, yeah. Astro. Um, because I see my body, I'm like mm -hmm. really aware. Mm -hmm. And I, the first time it happened, I was two years old or three, mm -hmm. and I remember being in my crib, ah, okay. seeing slats of my crib, yeah. and I remember just floating right through mm -hmm. the slats, yeah. and I remember we had a, um, a house that had um, cathedral ceilings, really high ceilings, mm -hmm. and I remember floating above the staircase, mm -hmm. and I saw yeah. my body. I absolutely saw my body, and yeah. I was deciding mm -hmm. if I should just keep going or not, okay. but so I decided to go with it, and I actually went out of my house, and we had this huge tree. Yeah, I saw the moon, and I started. Yeah. I wanted to go into outer space and, and see the planets and see the moon. Yeah. So I kept going and going, and then I suddenly got that fear. What if oh, I? Oh yeah, back? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I when I came back to my body, it was the same process of going through 
our window going yeah. high yeah. and mm -hmm. then in my body and I didn't see a silver cord because uh, people mm -hmm. do ask me that yeah. uh, the the other couple times I find myself where you know I'm trying I'm cold and yeah. I want to I'm in bed and I'm cold and mm -hmm. I want to open the window I mean yeah. I want to shut the window yeah so I, I'm shutting the window but I can't actually do it and I'm freaking out because yeah you know, and then I look back and I see my body there and I went, oh, I better go in my body and actually yeah. physically wake up so I can do this. Yeah. And yeah. one time it was really amazing. It was, I, mean, I had a lot, of, I had a lot of experiences where I'm in another country. Yeah. I'm talking to people and nobody's answering me. Yeah. And that, I'm like, that can happens you see a lot. me? Yeah. Can you see me? Can you see me? Yeah. And all these times that I have this is when I... I, I definitely notice the pain when I try to get back into my body. But this one amazing uh, experience happened um, when I had when my son was born, yeah. and he was you know he was just like a month or two old. Yeah. And I was breastfeeding him, so I would yeah. frequently fall asleep with him in my arms. Yeah. And I actually literally um, left. I left my body and went right through him and I could see I went right through his neck and I could see his esophagus yeah. I looked down and I could see his heart beating yeah and I went right through him went out of the apartment at the time and then I came and when I came back I came back through the same way into his yeah. neck I saw his insides back. and then back yeah. and every time I do this it's very painful and I don't mean to do it it just kind of and then, um, and I've had a lot of channelings from different people. Yeah. I do have a lot of dreams where I'm taken on craft, on spacecraft and shown things. And yeah. I, I, I had an actual dream about this, but um, I'm told I, I go to the astro plane pretty much every night and I do wake up very tired. Um, and I go, Julia, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. You yeah. said it's painful. Where is the pain coming from? Which part of the body? Uh, it's, I guess I or, would say it's not painful. It's uncomfortable. Oh, it's, so you mean psychological? Uh, oh, right. Okay, uh, no, you. it's physically uh, uncomfortable. Okay. It's not that it hurts. It's okay. that it's just an uncomfortable feeling going back into the body because I... I think I'm trying to acclimate my yeah. all my senses, and so and I always feel paralyzed until I'm completely. Yeah. Now it, you you we, we we might be talking about sleeping paralysis, okay? And that sleep paralysis that happens a lot, and I mean, it just happens like to the point that some people would have really like heavy sleep paralysis where they just lay straight and they cannot even open or, or shut the eyes they're just completely <laughs> like there and they want to they can't they, they just cannot move yeah that's a part of that's pretty much a part of every out of body experience although, although you you know i mean it, it depends like people people who would uh have their first out of body experiences would get a lot of sleep paralysis okay now michael for instance he has never had sleep paralysis because he would just automatically he's used to it yeah, yeah he just it, it just happens in a, a instance like that boom he's out of body or boom he's back in his body but yeah i have a lot of clients back in europe that would that i consult with them the sleep paralysis and for some of them it is painful it is fearful and i know what you're talking about yeah that's i don't get it as much i haven't had it since night um about I haven't had it for about seven or eight years. Oh, okay. But I used to get it a lot, like a couple oh. times a week. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. But I'm much more spiritual now. I, I went, yeah. I, my spiritual journey started um, later in life. And since it started, I'm actually pretty comfortable, I think. 
Oh, okay. At night. I just feel very tired in the morning. Yeah. From what I've been told, I'm like an ambassador for Earth, and I go to, yeah. there's like a galactic federation, and I go wow. there, and I okay. help with the translating of all the different languages. And I actually had a very realistic dream about that where I had all these races of beings behind me yeah. and I was trying to translate a new language. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. wow. And I was having a rough time and they were telling me that's okay. It yeah. might take a few tries yeah. because they okay. weren't telepathic. This new race wasn't telepathic. So I had to translate. Oh, Wow, well, that's, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> and I had I had a couple different very close friends that didn't know each other that told uh -huh. me this. And I you know, and it's really, really just amazing because my biggest you know, the my biggest thing is I want planet Earth to evolve to fifth dimensional consciousness. I want us to be a peaceful world where yeah. everything like I want it to be like heaven on earth. So that yeah. requires a journey. And so that's like, you know, yeah. I believe in the ascension process. So I talk about that. So apparently, and the funny thing is, um, you do get very tired in the morning because it's like you never slept. Oh, so, yeah, I'm definitely. I mean, so I don't know what you're talking take, about. Thank yeah. God I don't work anymore during the day because yeah. I take afternoon naps. Yeah. <laughs> That, oh, oh, yeah, that, <laughs> you bet, yeah. But, uh, you can tell them, though, I can tell them to ease, ease up, but I think it's so important now. Yeah. There's so many uh, beautiful changes that are happening with our world, and I don't want to slow down. I want, I want yeah. these changes to take place with ease and grace. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I mean, oh, gee. Yeah. What wonderful experiences. You yeah, have. It, it, wow. I was just... I didn't have any of these things till I was like 50 years old. I'm 56. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm 56 uh, now. I was interested in this stuff, but I never are? ever. My God, I, you look 30. I Jeez. love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I actually look younger because I meditate. When I started yeah. meditating and I started connecting to my source, yeah. and I actually do tell my DNA to, to evolve. I tell my DNA to renew yeah, and my cells to renew yeah. because I'm really at that, you know, <laughs> and people yeah. have told me I look 10 to 20 years younger from when well, they saw me. I, I mean, I Julia, you do. I mean, you do. <laughs> oh, well, I, I went to this retreat in um, Susie Byler. We had her on the show okay. and she's the one that kind of helped me through my journey and about you know being powerful and meditating and manifesting yeah. heaven on earth so one of the things you know um it's been a couple months since i've been to the retreat yeah. and we do we do phone calls mm -hmm. and everybody looks younger everybody <laughs> looks oh, that's younger. great and everybody said to me you look so much younger you don't age and i i see <laughs> aging but no you know well, but they, see spirit. <laughs> they see spirit, yeah. you know, coming yeah. through. Uh -huh. So, so what I, um, I wanted to tell everybody, um, my new thing with Ascension, we have August 21st, we have the eclipse coming and there's so many changes that are going to happen. Um, in the community, uh, the Ascension community, there's been a lot of different people that I've been listening to and a lot of different friends and I've been getting this message in my meditations to stay away from the computer and the television in August. <laughs> I mean, just do what you need to do for work or, you know, to talk to people. But I, I tend, because I'm a co-host of a radio show, I do tend to watch a lot of videos and listen to a lot of people. That's how I get my information a lot of times. And, you know, try to get guests for the show. But a lot of times it causes havoc with my belief system, with my my spirituality. Because they'll say, you know, there were people that were talking against any of this stuff happening, ascension. And so, um, 
So my guidance was to kind of keep meditating, go within, ask your guides. This is your life. You don't have to do what somebody else tells you to do. There's so many different spiritual teachers, so many different light workers. Everybody has an opinion. The important thing is to go within yourself. And so I want to kind of like not do the videos for a while, just kind of stay away from them. The YouTube videos, you know, everybody has ascension symptoms and and manifestation and all that. And just what I do in the morning is I do my um, manifestations verbally. I speak what, what my heaven on earth, what's my heaven on earth going to look like? So I speak that verbally and I, I manifest, I speak to my DNA for a healthy body, for my fifth dimensional body to come through. It's and all, you know, anything that's of the light. And, and then I, I'm now starting to really be quiet and not, um, I put, I found this really neat music. It's like a Tibetan music that's on YouTube, but that's different. That's your, you, you can do that, you know, put the music on very low. It's a meditation music. And that kind of helps me get into that beta state. And I had this really incredible, I just, you know, I had an incredible vision. Um, I got rid of all the thoughts, which is really hard for me to do. I, I, I was like completely blank and I just was there. And before I knew it, it was like an hour and it just felt like it was five minutes. But I got this um, this vision where um, I went to, everybody knows recently I went to this East SETI Ranch which in Washington State, which is really incredible. And there's Mount Adams there, and there's an extraterrestrial base in there. And I physically saw a lot of ships come out of the mountain. I, there was one big, huge one that came out. And um, they, in the meditation, I actually felt I was inside the mountain and they were taking me at night when I was sleeping there into the mountain. And there were all these different races. There was Palladian, Arcturian, um, the lion people. Um, and it was myself and my friend uh, my friend has this like crazy red hair and I saw her next to me with the, I saw red hair next to me and I saw three huge big windows and those windows were like rectangles that were huge and they were lined with metal and there was like, um, big, huge bolts in them. And they were showing me that we can see all the people on Skywatch Field. They have this big field where everybody looks at the mountain at night and sees the ships. So they can see the people. And if there's a lot of people, they do more of a show. It depends who's – they know who's there. And um, and then they uh, – we were all in a circle holding hands – uh, all these extraterrestrials and there was a beautiful Palladian woman. She was really beautiful. She had like golden blonde hair with the blue eyes, really attractive. And then we, the lion people. So we were all holding hands and I literally, my heart literally felt like I miss them. I love them. I miss them as if I remembered the experience and I missed and loved them. And they were telling me, we're always with you. We're with you all the time. We just wanted you to see what we did when you were sleeping. Because my friend and I, was, we were talking about how we would love to go in the mountain and see them. And so this meditation, I had no idea what I was going to envision. I just thought I would get a download of information, like, you know, what I need to do next week. I didn't realize I was going to get a... And ha what it is, it's like a mental vision. It's like your third eye. I wasn't yeah. actually seeing it, but it was like a movie playing out in, in my third eye. Like, yeah. like and I, I had the emotion. I had the emotion that I was there. I was excited. And I felt, you know, when I was holding their hands, I started to cry. Wow. Because I, I missed 
being with them. I wanted to physically be with them. And they were telling me, we're, we're with you right here. Yeah. And I feel them now. I feel like this pressure in my heart. So, um, so that was my first real, like most of my stuff when I'm meditating and I'm quiet, I usually start getting I, little bits of knowledge, like how I learned about it. The ascension process was meditating. You know, I, I would do it five, ten minutes. I, I'm not an hour meditator. I'll do it five, ten minutes. Um, and then, you know, I do my verbal manifestations and I ask my guys to give me guidance. And the knowledge doesn't necessarily come then. It might come throughout the day. All of a sudden I realize something and then I'll go, uh, I'll get confirmation. I'll, I'll go to a video or something and I get it confirmed. This, this knowledge, there might be three or four people that don't know each other. That's the clue. They don't know each other. And, you know, boom, the knowledge is there about the ascension process, this, this journey. So, you know, I did a lot of the Violet flame transformation, uh, getting rid of negative, you know, jealousy and all those emotions. Yeah. So now this this August for a lot of people, and I'm not saying for everybody, I'm just saying this is what I got for myself and a lot of people that I know. Uh, we all got the same information to just back away from the, you know, definitely, you know, back away from the news, the media. Um, um, get away from the and one thing is the computer has electromagnetic stuff and your cell phone has electric thing and they want you to kind of stay away from that as much as possible do a lot of meditation as much as possible be quiet you don't have to you could just sit and just blank out your mind and just ask for the highest good to come through and if you're tired sleep and drink a lot of water drink a lot of water and go with the flow. I've gotten so many messages about going with the flow. Whatever happens, you know, with the financial markets or the, the you know, Mr. Trump or any any of this nonsense that's going on, um, just go with the flow. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to it. Don't be a part of it. You know, um, the biggest thing is like, especially you know, when you're away from Facebook. You're away from the politics and the back and forth um, because we want to unite. We want to unite everybody. So, um, so just back away from tech for a while and go within and maybe eat help, you know, really try to eat organic, healthy food, more vegetables. I'm, I'm a big meat eater and I'm trying to, I'm going to try to not eat red meat in August. It'll probably last two days. <laughs> That's good. It probably lasts two days, but yeah. I've been really having a strong need. Like I, I do enjoy fish, but I'm really trying to lighten it up so I can, you know, be more open. So that's kind of like the message to go with the flow. If your body's tired, sleep, you don't have to do a million projects. Just do and live in the moment. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about the past. Try to live in the moment. The best way to do that is to breathe. Just sit and breathe every morning. That's why meditation is very good because that helps you center and live in the moment. So, so the word of the day is surrender. <laughs> Go with the flow. Um, don't be a part of the noise. Don't be a part of the, the fights and the drama. Just kind of be an observer. And stay, you know, listen to your own guides, listen to your own feelings. And meditation is the best way to, to do that. And it doesn't have to be an hour. It could be five, ten minutes. You know, it's just so that that was everything that that's everything. I, you know, the big message for the week. All right. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Julia is uh, Julia is amazing. Um, uh, I. Fine. Oh, I want I, I want to ask you. Uh, we have about ten minutes left. If someone wants to get in touch with you to either talk about uh, or you know get uh, get counsel about their out of body experience, 
um, where do they go? And also, where can they find your book? Wow. Well, they can always, you know, uh, send me an email to julia.sellers, S-E-L-L-E-R-S, at gmail.com. It's julia.sellers, S-E-L-L-E-R-S, at gmail.com. Now, the book, I mean, you know, guys, I have published the book in Slovak, okay, and two years ago. Now, the book is ready in English, but Michael does not feel like he's ready to come to come out of the closet yet. Right, so right. He, you know, he asked me to hold it. So I can imagine, you know, the book would be out there maybe next year towards the end of this year in English, okay? Now, I mean, it's it's anyone who speaks Slovak and Czech can read it right now, but uh, unfortunately, as I said, the book is ready in English, but I do not have a green light for from Michael to go ahead and publish it yet. So that's what ha- what's happening, and I have to respect that. But, you know, anyone who, you know, who wants to, you know, talk to me, you can, uh, you know, email me at the uh, email address that I just have uh, given out. and Or you can check out my, uh, uh, you know, my Facebook account or my uh my website, uh, you know, www.com, juliasellers.com. I mean, dot S-A, uh, S-K, I think. Oh, oh my God. www.juliasellers.sk, I think it is. But you can always email me, so you're more than welcome to do that. So, is that fair enough? <laughs> fair enough. That's yeah. Very, very good. Uh, Also, I want to let you know that uh, Ilona has uh, instant messaged me and thanked me and you for uh, talking about her tonight and her sister. And uh, she just wanted to know that she was happy about that. And, uh, you know, shout out to Ilona and Ivana again. They're great. They just really hi guys. <laughs> hi yeah, guys. Hi guys. I and, mean, uh, exactly. And don't forget Oli. Hello Oli. Hi Oli. Yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> then I just I, I just go ahead and say something in the check. Um, ahoj Ilona and Ivano. Ah, uh-huh. uh, jak se máte? A uh, je mi cti, cti, že můžu být tady s vámi. Jestli mě posloucháte, tak mi řekněte něco. <laughs> Very good. Oh, Beautiful. okay. <laughs> now listen. Uh, are you, are you going to speak anywhere that uh, you might want to tell the audience about, or, or you know, a conference that you're going to be at? And yeah, uh, I mean, I have a lot of conferences, but unfortunately, it's all back in Slovakia and the oh, Czech right, Republic, right. and you know, and it's all Slovak and Czech, and so you know, it's uh, unless someone speaks Slovak and Czech, you're more than welcome to tune in, but uh, you know, um, so. <laughs> well, that, maybe yeah. maybe someday you'll be uh, able to speak and go to conferences. I know uh, I know a very nice conference that you would want to go to some some year. Uh, the uh, the Starborn Support Conference when it comes back, hopefully in twenty uh, twenty seventeen. I think. Uh, oh, you, that's... yeah, you might want to be able to speak at that because uh, uh-huh. we would love to have you. I really I, I love this subject I, I love out of body i love near-death experiences yeah. it's uh just amazing what our consciousness and brain can do that yeah. we, we have to relearn yeah that's true it's uh, you know it's uh, a lot of things out there that you you know it's a lot of things out there that you don't know they're happening but they are and it's just that you know it's uh Wow, it uh, makes me go crazy because I am not in a position to talk about everything that I know, although right, right. I wish to, but maybe some day in the future I'll be able to talk about it. But trust me, guys, I mean, if you knew everything that's happening on Earth right now, 
you would be so amazed and you would be crying and you would be it just that hurts me that I not in a position right now to talk about it but I wish I could I can but trust me guys I mean I I mean my final words to you is that uh, t- you really remember that unconditional love is something that's worth of trying and being on this uh, wonderful planet because each of you uh, was born here into this blue planet to to just emit unconditional love out of your body and to be of service to everyone and unless you realize that you know it's it's just hard to talk about really wow that's ascension yeah yeah, yeah. It service is. to others it is. service yeah. to others choosing yeah. that path yes yeah. yeah and and the uh the letting go of the ego i think yeah. is very important that's too true. One one cannot go into this and and uh, think, hey, I'm going yeah. to make lots of money. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to be yeah. famous. That's not the point of it. That's not. It's right. not the point at all. It's not. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Julia Sellers. It has been wonderful having you on the show. And and when you feel you can talk about it. You let me know, and I will <laughs> push aside everybody yeah. else. And make a space for you to come in and talk. You know, guys, it's been really, it, it's great. I, I mean, it's a pleasure for me. It's an honor for me to be on your show tonight. Wow. And uh, uh, great. Many thanks to you, Michael, to you, Julia, to you, Bill, uh, to everyone out there that's uh, that, that you know, uh, you know, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Ilana, Ivana, Mary yes. Rodwell. I'm talking about Ray Hernandez, Bob Davis, uh, Rudy Shield. I'm talking about American Center for the Integration of Spiritual Transformative Experiences. It's a great community out there that I'm a member of, and I really appreciate you guys to be there for me. And just, uh, it's great honor i mean for me to talk to you tonight and just know that uh i love you guys and just be aware of the fact that unconditional love is all that counts it Mm. really is all that counts it's the it's a basic force that drives the universe and unless we realize that you know i mean it's it's unconditional love that runs everything, and that's my final words to you. And I love you all, guys. Really, love you too. thank well, you. Well, we thank we you love so you much. right back, uh, Julia. That thank was, you very much. That was profound. You're very welcome. Uh, my soapbox is your soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you need. Thank you oh. very much. Okay, uh, I wanna uh, I want to tell you that. Uh, I'm working on several really, really good guests, and as soon as I get the the good information from them, I will be posting it on Facebook. Uh, And uh, I'm telling you, the month of uh, August and the beginning of September are going to be super, super hot month. So you'll, you'll meet a lot of good people and listen to a lot of good things. On that note, God bless you all out there from one end to the other of the galaxy. And have a good week. And we'll see you next Saturday on the Starborn Connection. Mm